us and presenters for the webinar. We have with us today our school principal, Mr. Martin Tan, and our vice principals, Mr. John Lim and Mrs. Christina Tan. We have Mr. Jimmy Tong, Head of Department for Physical and Health Education and CCA. He will share on the signature program, Gabrielite Football Academy, known as GFA for short, as well as the wide variety of CCAs which help our students to excel as sportsmen. For our Q&A segment later, we also have our Head of Department of CCE, Student Development and School Community Partnerships, Mrs. Jessica Hoon, Head of Department of Discipline, Safety and Partnerships, Ms. Lau Mei Ling, Head of Department of English Language, Ms. Jane Lim, our Year Head for Lower Primary, Mrs. Doreen Lee, our Year Head for Middle Primary, Madam Christine Lee, and our Admin Manager, Ms. Chua B. Ping. Without further ado, Let's invite our principal, Mr. Martin Tan, to shed some light on the milestones of our school SGPS, as well as the Gabrielite experience. Mr. Tan, please. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, parents. I believe some of the boys are also here for this uh, webinar. I will not be surprised. I'd like to welcome everyone to the eOpen House. My name is Mr. Martin Tan, the principal of the school. And uh, we are delighted to have all of you join us for this uh, special event on the first day of the school holidays. We have just ended our first semester and uh, I believe you might have caught the, some of the video clips of our boys in action. And uh, indeed, it has been a very exciting semester, right? As uh, you would have seen, our boys did very well in the various uh, NSG competitions. And every time I watch our boys in action, I'm filled with great pride to see our boys doing their best, all right, competing with uh, good sportsmanship. And so as we share more about St. Gabriel's Primary School today with all of you, the parents, i just like to say that if you are looking for a school that provides good all-round holistic education, then St. Gabriel's Primary School is the right choice. And I would say that your boys are joining our primary school system at a time of great change. And some of these changes are for the better and definitely in line with what our school has been doing. For example, moving away from the old emphasis on exams Right? And you will find that because of that, as you join the primary school system, our boys will have more time to develop their interests, their talents beyond the academic arena. And that is what our Gabrielites have been receiving opportunities in. In sports, in arts, in music, in IT, and in community service, in student leadership. And if you are very keen for your boys to be developed in their character, right? And then I will assure you that St. Gabriel's Primary School will be able to provide your boys with this great experience. Now, as the MC, Mrs. Uh, Michelle Tan has shared, this year we celebrate our 70th anniversary, a great milestone. And it's been 17 year, 70 years since the brothers of St. Gabriel set up the St. Gabriel schools in Singapore. And... The great history has seen our educators providing education to the last, the lost, and the least. And we are inspired by our founder, St. Louis Marie de Montfort, a French priest who gave up everything in his life to help others, including setting up schools, churches, and so on. Until today, we continue to be inspired by him. My staff and I are greatly encouraged by our founder, and we continue every day to do our best to give the best possible education to our boys and to treat every boy as our own. Now, I personally have been in education service for 30 over years, uh, just a little bit. Um, this is the third school of which I'm principal. My first school, I was principal of Anderson Primary. 
Then I was principal of North Light School, which is a specialized school for students who are struggling in school for various reasons. And now I've been in St. Gabriel's Primary School for five years. And I love every day of my work here because the boys are so responsive, so keen to learn. And I have a great group of teachers here who care so much for the boys. And the parents in St. Gabriel's have been very supportive. And every day we are able to work together in partnership to give the best to our boys. Uh, let me take you through some slides which I've prepared, which actually, if you have followed the videos very closely, you will realize that this is just a reiteration. Now, if you look at our motto, mission, vision, and virtues, I think one of the first things that come to your mind is that this is indeed a school that focuses on the character building of our boys, all right? Shaping lives for service to God and nation. Now, being a Catholic mission school, all right, we help our boys develop their faith and to help them become closer to God. And we do it through many ways, which we will later share with you, all right? And every day in school, the staff, the boys are blessed, all right? God. Jesus, Mary, St. Louis, Marie de Montfort are looking after them and protecting them, ensuring that they are safe and they're happy. And if you look at our virtues, all right, it is to anchor them in the right values so that they are well prepared for the future. I think as working parents and, and people who have been uh, in society for some time, you will realize that one of the challenges we face today is we have developed a lot of people we have great brains, but do they have the character to go with it? And that is a big question mark. So for us, in helping our boys become leaders, sportsmen, and achiever, undergirding this is to be anchored in good virtues of self-discipline, generosity, perseverance, sincerity, and so on. And this is something that they will learn and demonstrate and grow in over the six years, put them in good state for the future. Next slide. Oh, just to share that uh, we have been in our current premises now since 1988. All right? uh, we've got very good facilities. Uh, just like every primary school in Singapore has very good facility today. Thanks very much to MOE's generosity. Now, in particular, if you look at the next slide, i just like to highlight uh, that I think you saw in the video clip a very brown and worn out feel. Right, I'm glad to share that since last year, uh, we now have a new synthetic field, all right, which is a great boost to our facilities in the school. And if you ask every Gabrielite, they will tell you they love the field for PE, for recess play, for CCA. And this is, this is a very special field because it's synthetic and therefore uh, rain or shine, this field is ready for our boys to use. Next slide. So, a little bit more about our founder, all right, um, who's known as a man for others. All right, uh, he had given everything in his life all right, uh, when he was a young man. And uh, he has given a lot to the world, to, to the community, all right, to education. And in the time with us, during the six years, our boys will be able to learn more about his life and his virtues through our MCLE program, our character citizenship education program, where our boys will learn about stories of Louis Marie de Montfort, how he helped his classmates in school, how he helped people in society, right? And to be honest with everyone, it is something that I see every day in school. Our boys demonstrating the virtues, helping each other in class, in the canteen, helping members of public. Uh, you know, when, when they're out and about. And this is someone who continues to inspire not only the boys, but also the staff. Next slide. Now, whatever we do in St. Gabriel's Primary School does not happen by chance. It is a deliberate strategic plan, right, to ensure that we develop our boys holistically. Now, we have all together three strategic trusts, but today I think I would just 
talk a bit about one, which is about the holistic development of our Gabrielites. There are four key thrusts here. One is to ensure our Gabrielites are of sound character. And that is where there is a very structured plan to help them learn the virtues. Secondly, to provide opportunities for Gabrielites to become leaders. And again, this doesn't does happen by chance. It's not a case where some get opportunities, some don't. But over six years, everyone has the chance to try to be a leader and also receive training uh, to understand what it is uh, to be a leader, which is about caring for others. And sporting opportunities uh, in St. Gabriel's Primary School is a plenty. From Primary 1 to Primary 6, through PE, to recess play, through annual games day, inter-class games, to national school games. All right, you name it, we have it. And opportunities to expose our boys to various sports, not to make them become a SEA Games gold medalist or Olympian. If they do so, that will be great. But really to help everyone enjoy, all right, and understand what a healthy lifestyle is all about. And finally, empowering giver life to be an achiever to be an achiever, not just in the academic, but also in terms of their character, in terms of helping others, in terms of their virtues, to be an all-round achiever. And that's what we mean when we say achiever, right? Next slide. Now, um, we have a few signature programs, right? Uh, signature means uh, programs where we place a lot of emphasis and, and invest a lot of resources. And again, these programs aim to provide a good, strong oral education, right? And one of which is our Gabrielite Digital Literacy Program. I think today to prepare the boys well for the future, they, they need to be quite savvy with IT. And this digital literacy program helps them learn about coding and design, right? Like for example, the use of Scratch, code spaces. And the boys learn to collaborate, to develop projects that improve the school, improve the community, improve their homes, all right? And this is one of the important 21 century competencies, all right, that we help to develop our boys in, all right? Our Gabrielite Football Academy, a very successful endeavor that the school has been, has embarked on in the past three to four years, helping a lot of boys enjoy football, enjoy sports, and in that process, learn about leadership, all right? Our Louis Meridi Monfort program that stretches high ability students. All right, we have a lot of intelligent and brilliant students, uh, boys in St. Gabriel's, I assure you. All right, in my interaction with them every day, I can tell that they are all thinking, asking questions, and, and learning all the time. So, this program aims to stretch the high ability students from primary four to primary six. All right. Of course, having said that, I would assure all students, uh, all parents here, that we leave no child behind, right? And students, and typically in every school, we will have students who are uh, slower in their learning, need more support. We'll have students with some special needs, all right? And we have the resources, teachers, and programs to cater to those students as well. And of course, our leadership program, okay? Next slide. So, Character and citizenship education is something we put a lot of emphasis on, all right? And this happens through uh, various programs in the school. I cannot say enough how important this aspect of our students' education is uh, in today's very turbulent world, right? And it is not surprising that our students learn these virtues well and they display it not only in school, but also at home. All right, and of course, we know the boys learn at different pace, right? And some students need more guidance, whereas some students uh, become peer support leaders to guide their, their classmates, right? Next slide. Now, our Values in Action program came back to life this year after uh, two to three years of pandemic where our students could not go out to serve the community. So from primary one to primary six, we have a very structured uh, program for every level. And uh, this year, I'm very proud of the boys. Uh, recently, our primary two boys, right, they welcome uh, kindergarten students from various PCF to actually help them learn about primary school life, to help them transit to primary school education. Right? Our primary three boys visited the St. Luke's Elder Care 
where they brought much joy and laughter to our elderly, all right, in the various uh, St. Luke's elder care homes, all right. And I received a lot of compliments from the elderly and the centre managers and St. Luke's elder care to say that actually a lot of the elderly are very inactive. They don't like to take part in activities, but because our boys were there with various games, and even the elderly were inspired to get out of the chair to take part in some of the fun activities that our boys organize for them. All right. And so at every level, uh, we have different values in action program, which is basically about our boys going out to the community uh, and serving the community and making a difference to the life of others. Now, we are well aware that uh, we have boys of different talent, all right? Not everyone loves sports, all right? Uh, some may be good in art, some may be good in music, all right? Uh, some may be good in IT. And we ensure that uh, there are opportunities for every different kind of student to, to grow and to blossom, all right? And in, that, in that process, embrace uh, diversity and also in that process, learn about, uh, although we are a Catholic school, to actually embrace all race and religion, uh, like we say in our pledge every day, regardless of race, language, or religion, we embrace, we work with each other, we support one another, all right? And um, now with the pandemic over, all right, with things opening up, uh, there are plans for international collaboration with schools from other countries. Next slide. All right. So PE, sports, Recess play, these are very important to our boys. Uh, recently, we had uh, uh, MOE director's visit and uh, he spoke to one of the boys and our boys were very natural, just very frank and honest. And he told the director, you know, Mr. So-and-so, do you know which is the most important period in the school day? And the director asked him, yes, which is the most important period? And the boy actually told the director that it's recess. Our recess is the most important period. And so not surprisingly, uh, it's a Gabriel's primary school. Our recess play is not a free for all. Anyone can run anywhere, everywhere is overcrowded. It's a very structured recess play where every day there are 10 different play areas for the 10 different classes. And every day, every other day is rotated. The students get to try different sports, different play areas every day. They, they play together as a class. All right, and it's, it's not uh, uncommon to find our boys sometimes skipping their food and drink to go straight to the recess play area because it means so much to them. Right. Next slide. And uh, so just some anecdotes to share with everyone about how our Gabrielites actually uh, demonstrate and display what they have learned, the virtues, and they actually help real people in real time. Right. This is a story of Atlas Gore. Right, who is now in primary six, uh, he, he and his siblings were at a, a, a local park, right? and it was uh, after a heavy rain, and he found this file on, on a bench, on a park bench. All right? And I think some people would have just left it alone and, and walked on, but Atlas opened up the file and realized that this file uh, had the spelling list, and it belonged to a, a student of another school. And straight away, the first thing that came to his mind was that, wow, the other boy must be very worried that he lost his file and his spelling list is inside. He must be very concerned that he can't learn his spelling. So he brought the file back. He told his mom, let's clean up the file. Let's dry up the file, right? And let's call up the school and to let the school know that we have found uh, the file. So mom helped to call up the school and, and the boy and the mother from this other school came and collected the file and they were very grateful very grateful and the mom wrote me an email to say, well, thank you very much to our Gabrielite who is uh, thinking and caring for others. It meant so much to them. Okay. And uh, uh, a picture, a scene that you see almost every day, it's a Gabriel's primary school where the older boys care for the younger boys, all right, helping the younger boys, all right, uh, a daily affair, all right. So here, Sage, uh, helping uh, Ashton uh, who, because they take the school bus daily and always reminding him to put on his seatbelt and to always remind him not to leave anything behind when he uh, and he alights on the bus, right? Next slide. 
okay, classmates uh, got injured, all right, and then our fellow Gabrielite helping him to carry his bag, right, and as I said, uh, this is a daily affair where our boys demonstrate their love and care for each other, look after one another, and, and it's a great culture, all right, a great culture, vibrant environment that we have, full of love and care for the boys, all right, okay. Yes, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, just a short sharing from myself. Uh, I think we have a few more things to share with you and then I'll be back for the uh, Q&A with everyone. So uh, please uh, do share with us uh, if you have questions, uh, anything you'd like to ask all right, uh, a little later in the program. Thank you very much. Back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Mr. Tan. Now, let's watch a video to learn more about a signature program in our school, the Louis Marie de Montfort LMM program, which aims to cultivate the spirit of lifelong learning in our primary four, five, and six students. The program also caters to these students' needs so that they can benefit from a more robust and academically challenging curriculum. Apart from enriching our students through programs designed for the four academic subjects, Students in the LMM program are also challenged in other competencies such as coding and innovation. Hello everybody, I'm Declan from 4 Odd. A critical and innovative thinker is what I am. I use pieces of information to make connections and draw conclusions. Hi everyone, I'm Yahya Fauzan from Primary 4 Loyalty. A resilient and self-directed learner is what I am. I own my learning and take risks without fear of failure. Bring it on! Hi, I'm Ryan Yat from 4 Loyalty. A convincing and confident communicator is what I am. This is firstly that I'm a great listener and I can compliment what others are saying with my own thoughts and ideas. Hi everyone, I'm Edward from Four of the Leaders. An empathetic and morally responsible person is who I am. Just like our founding father, Louis Marie de Montfort, I recognize, feel and respond to the needs of people around me. Whenever there's someone suffering in silence, I want to be there for them. The LMM program is a signature program in St. Gabriel's Primary School that aims to stretch our high ability learners. Now, these learners typically learn at a very fast pace and our normal curriculum will not be able to engage them well. So St. Gabriel's Primary School has this program that prepares our students for the future to become self-directed and confident learners and students with resilience to face the future. Albert Einstein once said that the important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. In our quest for knowledge, we are often guided by our ability to question, analyse and evaluate the things around us. The innovation programme, IVB, an initiative from MOE Gifted Education Brands, provides us a unique opportunity for us to develop our skills and strategies for generating ideas and evaluating solutions to address the issues faced. Conducting surveys to gather information on products, making prototypes, and writing reports on our innovations. The Coding Enrichment Program is another avenue that enables us to work in teams in the field of computational thinking. We are introduced to computational coding concepts through a blend of software inputs and hardware outputs. Learning never ends with us because life is full of challenges. We seek knowledge in our efforts to find solutions and thus overcome them with confidence. By doing so, we grow to become resilient and wiser Gabrielites. Through the E2K Maths and Science program, we learn reasoning skills and deepen our conceptual understanding through an inquiry approach. The E2K Mathematics program is designed to enable us to develop mathematical reasoning skills so that we can deepen our understanding of the subject through an inquiry approach. We even get to collaborate with our peers and engage in mathematical thinking through puzzles, games and explorative activities. Thanks to the E2K Science program, 
We get to develop scientific inquiry process skills as well as attain other important 21st century competencies such as resilience and resourcefulness, critical and inventive thinking, and effective communication skills. Apart from the various programs, our daily lessons are prepped with lots of engaging activities and experiments where we get to investigate and extend on our learning beyond the four walls of the classroom. For instance, during a recent science lesson, we applied what we learned on the topic of heat to create a solar steel. We certainly had lots of fun doing so. It is said that communication is the key to success in any situation. However, for communication to be effective, we first need to make sure that we can convince our audience of our speech by being confident in it. As such, we are fortunate to have programs designed for us to bring out the best in us when we deliver thoughts and ideas. The literature program enables us to not only express ideas through speech, but to also express them through film. Yes, film literally is an integral part of our primary five literature program our Gabrielites have had the opportunity to create short films. They incorporate specific short sizes and angles when framing each scene. This emphasizes the relationship between the characters and their surroundings to the audience. The LMM Higher Chinese program is another great opportunity for us to understand how a language can be experienced and enjoyed through various platforms. This year, we created our own short films using the Book Creator app. We unleash our creativity and learn the importance of respect and teamwork during the process. In fact, we had a lot of fun watching the videos created by our friends. Apart from the videos, some of us also got a glimpse of how the broadcasting media industry works by scripting and recording a podcast. We had so much fun and felt as if we were actual DJs at a radio station. Our favorite program has got to be the speech and drama class. Not only did we get to perform and act, we also got to play many interesting games. The LMM Higher Chinese program is indeed so much fun. Now, we are much more confident when it comes to speaking Mandarin. As part of the efforts to promote empathy and care for others around us, we get to participate in the various value and action programs organized by the school. For instance, in order to create awareness about food wastage and play our part to help reduce food wastage, Students from four orderliners held a food collection drive. The beneficiaries of this donation drive include family service centers, homes, soup kitchens, and voluntary welfare organizations. This drive took place during the Virtuous Week, which is in line with our founder Louis Marie de Montfort's belief in helping others in need. Apart from this, we also have the Save the Pens campaign where our LMM Gabalites get to convince their schoolmates to donate unwanted pens and pencils. The project aims to create awareness in students to reduce wastage and to recycle whenever possible. Pens collected from students would be refilled or donated to underprivileged students in Singapore and the region. Pens which could not be refilled or reused are stripped of their plastic and metal parts for recycling. We thank you for joining us, learning more about our LMM program. However, this is not the end of our journey with you. Yes, we hope to see you soon. As our motto goes, labor conquers all, we hope the labor of love is showcasing the LMM program to you will dominate your hearts and minds. Bye! Bye. Now, let's learn more about our students' experiences in St. Gabriel's Primary School through the voice of two of our Primary 1 Gabrielites, as well as student leadership in our school through our head prefect, Abel Wee. We will now watch two videos featuring these students. My name is Ian Josh and I'm from Primary 1 Perseverance. Today, Alex and I would like to share more about our experiences in St. Gabriel's Primary School. I love going to St. Gabriel's Primary School because I get to learn new things every day and play with my friends in recess. 
Hello, my name is Elliot and I'm from Premi 1 to 7. I and many friends classmates and group theater of group projects and assignments. Sometimes we have show and tell. When we bring something to school, we share with the class. I'm excited to see what my class is doing and I'll always learn the things from you. Teachers who teach different subjects. My teachers make learning fun by using games, stories, and activities to help me understand the lessons better. We also have special classes like art, music, physical education, and health, which I really enjoy because I get to express myself and be creative. I've been having a wonderful time with the neighbors from this school. Every day, I feel happy and excited to go to school and see all my friends and teachers. I'm grateful for all the opportunities my school has given me to learn and grow. In school, we have rules that we have to follow, like raising up our hand to ask a question and being respectful to our classmates and teachers. We also have the voice for good behavior, like stickers and praises from our teachers. It feels great to be recognized for doing the right thing. Overall, I love you and doing the primary school. I feel happy and excited to go to school every day and I know I'm giving knowledge and skill that will help me in the future. Good morning everyone, I am Abel from 6 Ordinators and I am the head prefect of St. Gabriel's Primary School. Ever since I entered the school, I have always looked up to the older Gabrielites as they were like big brothers to me. In St. Gabriel's Primary School, various opportunities are given to students to lead and serve the school in roles such as a subject monitor, CCA leader, peer support leader or prefect. I was delighted and honoured to be chosen as a prefect in primary three, as it was then my turn to be one of the older brothers looking after the ones who came in. I was elected as the head prefect in January this year after an exciting round of campaigning. As the head prefect, I helped to manage different events in the school as well as inform the students about the various happenings in the school. Together with my team of prefects, we tried to assist the school body. Let me share with you about the leadership positions available in our school, which are offered across three tiers. In Tier 1, every Gabrielite from the Primary 1 to Primary 6 levels gets the opportunity to take up a leadership role as a subject or class monitor. Tier 2 leaders are specialist leaders such as prefects and CCA leaders, which are only from the Primary 3 to Primary 6 levels. Lastly, Tier 3 leaders are those from the Pride team, consisting of primary 4 to primary 6 students who serve in the school and the community. As leaders, we do our best to uphold the school virtues of self-discipline, generosity, perseverance, sincerity, loyalty, order leaders, respect and diligence. I hope that what I have shared was useful to give you a better understanding of the school student leadership. St. Gabriel's Primary School has given me the opportunity to grow academically and in character and I am proud to call this my second home. Thank you and have a nice day.
Next, we shall have Mr. Jimmy Tong to share on GFA and CCA for the holistic development of our Gabrielites. Mr. Tong, please. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Uh, good morning. I'm Mr. Jimmy Tong, Head of Department for PE and CCA in our school. Now, every child is talented in its own way. At St. Gabriel's Primary School, we expose your child to a wide variety of activities, even at lower primary levels. As CCA provides a good platform for your child to engage in something that he excels in or has a strong interest in, a wide variety of CCAs are offered in our school from sports and games, such as the Gabriel Light Football Academy, to clubs and society like Robotics Club, as well as our performing arts group, like our brass band. And we also have a uniform group, our scouts. Now, sit back and enjoy a short video showcasing all our CCAs in our school. You will have a better understanding after watching the video. Enjoy.
Welcome back. I hope uh, you enjoyed that short video clip uh, showcasing some of our CCAs in our schools. At SGPS, our boys are somehow strongly drawn to sports. This is very evident in our PE lessons and daily recess playtime. Our Gabriel likes participate actively in a wide variety of sports. As a result, it is not surprising that a large percentage of our boys naturally choose sports as their CCA. At present, there are about 65% of the cohort they are engaged in sports CCA in our school. Right? We have the Gabriel Light Football Academy. Uh, this year, we have also started with the Gabriel Light Badminton Academy. We have basketball, golf, wushu, athletics, and very soon, floorball will be open as well. Now, you might be wondering what's the difference between a Gabriel Light Badminton Academy and a normal badminton CCA. Well, uh, I will just lay out the difference. Uh, a normal CCA, usually they only participate in sports to improve their sports skills and take part in competition. But at academy level, we encourage recreation participation. So even if your child doesn't make it to the school team, we will not uh, uh, discourage them from participating. At the same time, the academies also involve your children in leadership development in their sports. So, for example, in our football and badminton academies, we train junior coaches as well as empires as they grow older. So, that's the difference between an academy and a normal sports CCA. Now, uh, do find out from our website more with regards to some of this sports CCA. But if your child is not interested in sports, there are still a lot of variety for him to take part in. We have our aesthetic clubs, uniform groups, our robotics clubs and band consistently deliver wonderful achievements at various levels, and they are quite popular as well. Our scouts attract a fair bit of interest, and uh, because of that, we have started having a lot of engagement with our brother's school from St. Gabriel Secondary. So many of the senior scouts from the secondary school sites have started to come on board and and teach a lot of field craft as well as scout skills to our young cubs. And finally, let me just add a quick word about, you might have seen in the short video clip at the end that this program that we have is called the Gabriel Like Sports Excellence Program. Now, this is a program meant for boys with uh, exceptional sports talents across a variety of sports. It is not really a CCA, right? But boys who are involved in this program typically go through training in various sports for every day, almost every day. At P1 and P2, you might want to know that we select them at primary, sorry, at physical education as well as PAL lessons. Thereafter, those who are selected will be invited to take part in this uh, Gabriel Light Sports Excellence Program where our children are taught different sports, right? From badminton to football to athletics. And hopefully when they grow older, when they get into P3, P4 and above, they will start to participate in national school games for our school. Finally, I mean, I just add that now for CCA, uh, it is only uh, mandatory for students to start participating at P3, right? At P1 and P2, actually, there's no necessity, right? But there are other avenues for the P1 and P2s to engage in CC activities, in particular PAL, PE, art lessons, and so on. Right? First two years, we let them enjoy themselves, discover their talent, and from P3 onwards, they will have the opportunity to choose CCAs that suits them. I hope this is uh, helpful information for all of you. Uh, continue to enjoy the rest of the webinar. Thank you very much. Michelle, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Tong. Next, I will address commonly asked questions before we move on to the Q&A segment properly. Okay, P1 registration. Do take note that registration at each phase is based on your eligibility at that phase. For more information, please visit this moe.gov.sg website. Next, something that many parents are concerned about is what are our school hours. We start school at 7.30 a.m. daily. However, students are advised to be in class by latest 7.25 a.m. 
to prepare themselves for the start of the day as well as to participate in our morning assembly. School dismissal is at 1.30 p.m. from Mondays to Thursdays and 1 p.m. on Fridays. Next, as mentioned, these are the school programs. For CCA, all students will be given the opportunity to join the CCA in Primary 3. For Program for Active Learning, also known as PAL Lessons, at the Primary 1 and Primary 2 levels, two hours of curriculum time a week are allocated to expose students to fun learning experiences that facilitate their holistic development in the physical, cognitive, social, aesthetics, and moral domains. Mother tongue languages. Mother tongue languages is offered in all Singapore schools as a second language. It is a compulsory subject. There are three official mother tongue languages, Chinese, Malay, and Tamil. The learning of mother tongue language allows our boys to communicate more effectively in their mother tongue language, to appreciate their cultural heritage, and to connect with wider communities across Asia and globally. This is how it works. Students of Chinese, Malay, and Indian ethnicities will study their own mother tongue languages. Students who are Eurasian, of mixed parentage, and whose mother tongue is not one of the official mother tongue languages can request to study any of them subject to approval. Non-Tamil speaking students of Indian ethnicity can apply to study non-Tamil Indian languages such as Hindi or Punjabi. These language classes are not offered by MOE and are usually conducted by external bodies. You can find out more information from the board for the testing and teaching of South Asian languages website. Next, what strategies do we use for students who are weak in mother tongue? For our primary two students, there is a reading support program that is conducted during curriculum time. There is also an in-house primary two learning support program to support students in the learning of Chinese language. For the primary three and primary four students, the mother tongue support program supports students in the learning of their language during curriculum time. Next, how do we support students with needs? Learning support is provided for primary one students who require additional help with English language or mathematics. Those who are identified will receive support through the Learning Support Program for English, known as LSP, and Learning Support for Mathematics, known as LSM. Depending on the needs of the students, the school's Special Educational Needs or SEN officers may conduct withdrawal sessions to provide learning and behavioural support for up to one hour per week. Next, what is the school's policy and measures on dealing with bullying. Students are often educated and reminded through a set of infographics on Say No to Bullying, which is prominently displayed in each classroom, as well as through talks by our school leaders and teachers during assembly. The school also works in close partnership with parents to further curb such issues. Next. What type of disciplinary measures does the school adopt for various offences? Our school stresses on the importance of using the whole school approach to discipline using the modified restorative practices known as MRP. Some of the measures taken include home involvement, counselling, class apology, issuance of letters of notification or offence, suspension of recess play, suspension from CCA, and suspension from school. Next, how does the school promote the Catholic ethos? In St. Gabriel's Primary School, we create a Catholic environment for the students and staff. Daily prayers are said before morning assembly, after recess in class, and at the end of the day. Masses are also held in our school throughout the year. In semester one, we had the beginning of the school day mass and Founders Day mass. Other masses like Ash Wednesday and Ascension Thursday, holy days of obligations are held in the school chapel after school. Religious education, known as RE lessons, are held for all Catholic students. However, non-Catholic students with parental consent can also participate in these lessons. The lessons taught in RE are aligned with events in the liturgical calendar such as Lent 
and follow the spirituality of our founder, St. Louis Marie de Montfort, very closely. Finally, there are important signs and symbols of the Catholic faith placed around our school. We have a chapel, a grotto of Mother Mary in the school garden, a statue of St. Louis Marie de Montfort at the school foyer, and Stations of the Cross placed on the pillars in the school on the ground level. With all these, we do our best as a school to promote the Catholic ethos. Finally, student care. Morning Star Community Services is a student care centre that is based in St. Gabriel's Primary School. As the student care is located within the school premises, no arrangement is required to send the boys to the student care. However, parents do need to make their own arrangements to fetch their child home in the evenings. For more information about student care, school bus, bookshop, school uniform and other school matters, please visit our school website. We shall now move on to the Q&A segment properly. The Q&A panel is headed by our principal, Mr. Tan, and vice principals, and supported by various members of our school's executive committee. Please type your questions into the Q&A box. The panel will try to answer them during this live Q&A segment that is led by our principal. Mr. Tan, over to you. Thanks, thanks, Michelle. All right, so we've come to the segment where you can ask any question, parents. And of course, I noticed that some of you have already sent your questions and have gotten uh, your replies. But in any case, we have some dedicated time now for you to uh, send more questions if you have, right? You can ask anything about the school. Uh, so while the questions come in, let me just uh, share a bit more. Right. Uh, firstly, I think there were questions about how do we balance the education for Catholics and non-Catholics. Uh, I want to say that we are an inclusive school. We are a school for everyone, any child, regardless of race, language, or religion. And so, for example, when we have religious education, uh, boys can either opt in or opt out. And if they opt out, then they will have lessons on current affairs, uh, financial literacy, saving the environment, right? Other important topics, right? So um, in that sense, we cater for all the students. In any case, uh, when we focus on the Catholic ethos, we are actually talking about universal values. Universal values like respect, perseverance, uh, which are applicable to anyone uh, in any kind of situation, all right? So it's, it's really more about character uh, development uh, for all our students. Uh, the other thing I'd like to share is, yes, uh, St. Gabriel's Primary School is affiliated to St. Gabriel's Secondary School, a very good secondary school. So what happens at Primary 6 is that as long as our boys choose St. Gabriel Secondary School as their first choice in the six choices that they get to make, they are assured a place in St. Gabriel Secondary School. Uh, that is the, uh, the advantage of affiliation, right? And of course, uh, we know that now uh, the streaming has been scrapped. Uh, it is no longer a thing called normal academic, normal tech or express stream, but now it's uh, known as the G1, G2, G3 courses, right? Which means that students can actually take subjects across the different uh, courses, right? For example, uh, you might have a student who is strong in three subjects, but one of the subjects is not as strong. The student can take the subject at a slower pace, right? And uh, so with these changes, right, uh, we can see that the education system is now opening up to cater to students of different strengths, providing more diverse pathways, all right, and uh, to be more encouraging towards our students' growth and development. Now, um, the, our P1 registration history, all right, um, the past few years, uh, we have seen balloting, we have seen balloting, especially at phase 2C, all right, uh, either at the P2C or at the supplementary phase. Uh, of course, last year was very interesting. Last year was very, very interesting. Um, when we went into 2C phase, which is the open phase, we had 77 vacancies and we had exactly 77 applicants. So 
I think it was a good thing because uh, no one had to go through balloting because everyone who wanted to be in St. Gabriel's Primary School got a place. So exactly uh, 77 places in 2C, there were exactly 77 applicants. So again this year, we have 150 places. MOE has given us 150 places for our P1 registration. Okay, all right. So let's see whether there are other questions that come on stream. All right. Okay, this is an interesting one here. Uh, will you be able to share a perspective on the potential benefits of attending single sex school versus co-ed school? All right, that, that's an interesting question. Okay, um, well, I have been uh, a school leader in a co-ed school as well as uh, now in an all-boys school. But I would say that in St. Gabriel's Primary School now, we, we have a school where we are very focused on catering to the boys. Our programs, our pedagogies, our resources are very focused, all right? And I have also noticed that our boys are very focused there is one less distraction at the primary school level, all right? They can really focus on their sports pursuit, their academic pursuit, all right? And, and uh, you know, so this is the advantage of uh, uh, all boys school at the moment. Uh, the teachers also are very focused in terms of, um, and, and I both apply the best strategies to engage uh, the boys, all right? So, of course, um, as you know, in a real society, eventually boys have to meet girls right? and boys have to interact and learn to respect opposite gender, have to learn to work with the opposite gender, which would be the girls. All right. So at the moment, uh, I think it's very obvious that in all boys school, you probably miss the opportunity to interact with girls in the primary school. All right. So there are pros and cons indeed. Uh, all boys school, uh, which we see very focused uh, programs, very focused energies, and the boys are able to develop, um, you know, and, and really uh, be very focused on their holistic development. All right. Uh, teachers can also center their energies uh, without too diverse uh, a population, too, too diverse a class, you know, when you have boys and girls. Uh, but obviously then, uh, you know, you miss out on the interaction with the girls, which eventually, uh, I think when our boys go into society, uh, that, that's a group that they, they will have to interact well and with respect. Okay. So, of course, uh, uh, to go a bit further, if you ask me, are there plans for St. Gabriel's Primary School to become co-ed? like what we have heard about ACS, all right? I, I will be very upfront with you uh, with parents uh, because you are likely to be potential parents. Uh, at the moment, no. At the moment, no. I think probably not going to happen in the next, uh, in the, in the, in the next two, three years, the short term. But will it be no forever? It's something that uh, is too early for us to tell. All right, uh, it's too early for us to tell because things are changing all the time. And we have a very, very dynamic St. Gabriel Foundation and School Management Committee that is constantly guiding the school in the way forward in terms of the education we want to provide to our boys. And we are watching the environment, the global changes, the national uh, landscape very closely. All right, and whatever plans, the decision we make in the future will always be in the best interest of our boys. All right. So, so uh, uh, nothing stays the same forever. Right. Uh, and no, now doesn't mean no forever. All right. We will do what's best for our boys. Okay. Uh, what other question have we got there? So I've taken that one live. My child, okay. Minor special need discuss the support yes all right uh, parent Jaylene who who's, would like to have a short discussion before registering because uh, your child has some special needs 
yeah, by all means, uh, please email us today after today. All right, uh, and we will uh, arrange with our special needs officer to to uh, have a session with you and to actually understand uh, what are the learning needs that your child uh, is is having. All right, and and so um, it's something we can do. Yes, yes. It could be before the registration, right? Um, and in fact, I just want to also share that um, I think today's e open house has served us well, you can actually join us from the comfort of your home or wherever you are without having to make your way all the way down, all right? Um, at the same time, I will also share that um, if you do feel the need to bring your son down to have a walkabout, to really make him feel comfortable, uh, please drop us an email as well, all right? Uh, we can probably arrange some kind of a group tour Okay, uh, arrange some kind of a group tour if you really feel the need uh, to, to walk around the campus and to have a feel of it, uh, you know, to see some of the facilities. Uh, it, it can be arranged, all right? It can be arranged. Uh, of course, you can also see because it's a, it's, a, it's a virtual platform today, my staff and I were able to compile uh, a lot of videos for you. And sometimes you actually get to see more of the school than to be here physically, all right? You know, like uh, some people say when they watch the F1, if they actually go to the F1 track, you can only see certain things. But if you watch F1 from TV, wow, you know, the TV can, can, can show you all the different angles, right? Yeah, but do let us know if you really feel that uh, you would like to come by, swing by with your son, uh, you know, uh, drop us an email, all right? We will arrange uh, some kind of a group tour for you, okay? All right, what is home-based learning like in St. Gabriel's primary? Well, this is a very good question, yeah. Uh, with the recent pandemic and with our national leaders advising us to be prepared for future pandemics, which could even be worse than COVID, we must always be prepared. So home-based learning is something that uh, it's like, um, you know, we have a drawer plan, always ready, okay, our HODs, together with my VP, Mr. John Lim, uh, we have drawer plans whereby if uh, there's a need uh, for home-based learning due to school closure, okay, we will have uh, learning programs uh, uninterrupted, uh, ensure that it's not disrupted. And we have uh, what we call the SLS, all right, in, in the primary school. That's called the student learning system, all right, whereby it's online learning and students, uh, teachers prepare lesson plans, uh, assignments, all right, and uh, this will be pushed out to the students to do from home, and the teachers will also conduct online Zoom lessons, all right, uh, with, with the students, okay, uh, so that uh, teachers also can give direct instructions uh, to the boys, okay, and then uh, during home-based learning, besides ensuring that students keep up with their academic studies, uh, teachers also check in with the boys to make sure that the home situation is okay, like during the pandemic, uh, we realized uh, in a few homes, it was not conducive for the children to do home-based learning. And so what we did was, uh, despite the pandemic, we had a small number of boys come back to school to do the home-based learning, right? So teachers check in with them to make sure that uh, emotionally they are okay, all right? Things are fine, all right? And offer the opportunity for interaction in case the boys have some questions from the, uh, the home-based uh, assignments, all right? So... Uh, Home-based learning uh, is really a last resort because um, definitely coming to school, uh, having the interaction with classmates and teachers, the, the learning is so much more, so much richer, okay? How often does home-based learning happen over the course of the year? All right, uh, because we have uh, just come out of the pandemic where there has been quite a bit of home-based learning, uh, we have so far not scheduled any more home-based learning. Uh, but in the steady state, all right, if things are well and, and we do want to put the home-based learning 
uh, system into some kind of practice, uh, keep it warm so that in any case we need to activate, we are ready. All right. So in a steady state, it will be once a year, once a year for one or two days. All right. Just to ensure the students are still well versed with how to access the, the SLS and the online learning. Okay, school bus uh, is being answered. Can you share PSLE results? Okay, all right. I'm sure even in today's context, uh, um, parents are very concerned with academic results. So I will not bog you with the details, but I'll just like to share uh, that the holistic education we provide to our boys is working. It's working because our boys are achieving good outcomes in, in the national school games, in external competitions, uh, in sports, ICT. And our PSLA results are just as good, right? Um, how, do I, how do I benchmark this, right? Now, uh, I, I do not just benchmark with any school, but MOE has, MOE has identified a basket of, of schools, all right, uh, that are comparable to St. Gabriel's Primary School in terms of the profile of the students, all right? Uh, so that students of the same profile are deemed to have the same kind of potential to achieve. So this basket of seven to eight schools that MOE has identified are typically schools where the socioeconomic status of the families, the, the qualification of the parents are quite similar. So, so with this basket of schools where the students are supposed to the same capability potential, I, I would just say it here that last year, our students did better than the overall average of this basket of schools in terms of their achievement level scores at the PSLE, right? So I would just once again say that, right, um, to be very honest, our, our programs, our efforts in holistic Education is working well because our boys are achieving good outcomes and results all around. Okay, there's a program that, that talks about, uh, there's a question about um, if the boy is interested in art and music, can SGPS help challenge the boy to his greatest potential? Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are well aware that uh, not every boy is inclined to sports. Uh, and, and I have boys here who, who are very inclined to music. They play the piano, they play the violin. All right, uh, you know, and, and they can draw very well, you know, and, and so we have our music and art uh, curriculum, we have our music and art uh, CCAs, we take part in the Singapore Youth Festival, uh, we display our students' art paintings around the school, their artwork, you know, uh, we have school concerts where students who can sing well, play the, play the piano, play the violin, they will perform for the school. All right, and, and uh, yes, definitely we, we encourage uh, students of different talents to, to actually grow. And, and yeah, if your son is very into music or very into art and you have, you have a suggestion how we can help support that further, please let us know. Please let us know, all right? Because we, we know that uh, the typical, a lot of our Gabriel-like parents uh, do, do uh, provide additional enrichment program for the children outside school. To help further their interests. Okay, are there any more questions? Uh, we, we would love to be able to share as much information with all of you as possible today. All right, another great question. Uh, what proportion of God moved into St. Gabriel Secondary School? Okay, uh, yes, this is a very good question. Every year after PSLE, about somewhere between 50 to 60% of our Gabrielites move on to St. Gabriel Secondary, 50 to 60%. And this is a story I'd like to share, all right, of our SMC chairman. His name is Dr. Francis Chong. 
he he was a president scholar, right? And uh, back in his days, he gave us primary school. Of course, he aced the PSLE. And after that, he chose to go to Sir Gabriel Secondary School, all right? And uh, so recently, I had the privilege to ask him about his thinking behind that decision. And he told me it was, it was very clear. He was going to the secondary school where the ethos, the culture, and the virtues were the same. So when he went to this, this uh, similar environment that was very conducive for his learning, he hit the ground running. He didn't need to readjust. Like, for example, if you go to another school, there's a completely different culture. Typically, it takes three to six months to get used to, to, and then all the completely new friends. So Dr. Francis Chong, his perspective was that he wanted to go to another environment which, which felt like family. So when he went there, right, immediately his learning could continue, right, and his transition was smooth. And like they say, the rest is history, right? He continued to, to do very well. Uh, became a president scholar, went into the government service, all right? And today he's back as the chairman of our school uh, management committee at his way of giving back to the St. Gabriel schools. Will the school be undergoing any renovation or site relocation in the next few years? Uh, site relocation, no. Uh, site relocation, no. At least not that I know of. Uh, but upgrading in the school is a constant. All right? We keep on improving our facilities, our infrastructure, whether it's the school garden, whether it's the school chapel, uh, whether it is, it is the, the IT infrastructure around the school. All right? uh, like recently, I share with you, we converted the school natural field into the synthetic field. We are looking at building a shelter outside the school so that uh, you know, the walkway from the MRT will be sheltered all the way to the school and not have a, have a gap between uh, the, the, the road outside the school and the entrance of the school so that on rainy days, you know, our boys don't get wet. All right? so, so we're constantly looking at uh, upgrading the infrastructure of the school. Right? Uh, recently, we gave a new coat of paint all right, to the school, all right? Uh, so so that, that's, that's a given, all right? I have a very strong admin and operations team here that supports the staff, that, uh, that takes care of the children as well and ensures that all our teaching and learning plans can, can be carried out because there's strong admin and operation support. Yep. Okay, so I, I see the last question has been answered. I am very mindful of time. It is a weekend and we don't want to take uh, longer than we had uh, communicated, all right? Because I'm sure everyone has a lot of uh, plans here, weekend with the family. So it just leaves me to thank everyone for joining us today for the E Open House. Please keep in touch, all right? And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much. Back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Mr. Tan, for chairing the Q&A segment. So, uh, parents, uh, once again, a gentle reminder, if you have any further questions, you may email them to us via this email address, scgps at moe.edu.sg. Today's webinar will be recorded and uploaded to our school's website. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. It's been a pleasure being with you. Again, you can visit our school website to learn more about our school programs and for other information on Primary 1 registration. Thanks again for joining us today and have a good weekend. Goodbye.